Check Podcasts. Hi, I'm Bruce Williams. I'm the CEO of the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to Chamber Chats, as always being done from the podcasting studio at Czech Television. I would like to acknowledge, as always, that I live and work in the unceded ancestral territory of the Lekwungen people, the Songhees and the Esquimalt. A privilege and an honor to live and work alongside them every day. Chamber Chats are made possible by the support of Island Savings, a division of First West Credit Union. Today, one of my favorite things is food. We're going to talk about food. We're going to talk about fun food. We are all doing our best, of course, to do local. Buy local, shop local, think local, eat local. And today, two people are going to join us to talk about something that is, as I like to say, uniquely and intensely local for Vancouver Island and Greater Victoria. And they make, they make what I like to call comfort foods. One makes ice cream, the other makes peanut butter. Joining us today for our chamber chat is Jill Van Gin. She is the CEO and founder of Fatso Peanut Butter, with one of the greatest names of all time. And Daniel Edler is the CEO and founder of 49 Below Ice Cream. And both of these folks have actually been finalists in our business awards as well. So thank you all for being here. Jill, how do you describe Fatso Peanut Butter to a stranger? Tell us about your products. Yeah, so Fatso is an all-natural peanut butter enriched with plant-based fats. So that includes organic coconut oil, MCT oil, chia seeds, and flax. Uh, we never put sugar or palm oil into our peanut butter, and we come in some hyperindulgent flavors like our classic coconut, uh, crunchy salted caramel, and our new and my current favorite, yeah. this could change. I love all my children, but um, our maple flavor. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So, and there's a whole range, and we'll talk more about the range of your products and what they are. Uh, Daniel, tell us about your ice cream, 49 Below. So we are uh, a local company. We've been doing this since 2015. Uh, We started as a subscription service going directly to consumers and have now grown to be in about 25 stores um, throughout the peninsula and a couple on the Gulf Islands. And we are weeks, hopefully days, away from uh, opening up our first storefront. So, Oh, great. Where's that going to be? So it's on uh, Cabra Bay Road right next to Slater's and Willow's Pizza and that little development there. Oh, yeah. Good for you. Yeah. So let's uh, let's kind of. I want to go back to the beginning with you there. So by subscription, that means it's like a magazine, right? You would just say, "Hey, Daniel, I want some ice cream. Make it happen." Yeah. So it's basically like a gym membership. You sign up, and then every month we deliver two pints to your house to your business. Um, one of those flavors is one of our staples, so you know vanilla chocolate, uh, one of those, and then one is something seasonal. And we always try to use local berries or local honey or whatever to make something uh, delicious. And every month so far since 2015, pretty much every month come up with a new flavor. So that's hundreds of new flavors that we've been playing around with. Surely many households would be like mine where two pints a month really wouldn't be enough. Have you found that? That's that's why we have uh, a lot of retailers that stock our product <laughs> as well. Um, that's great. Um, yeah. So I, I want to, uh, Jill, tell me how, how did you determine that peanut butter was was the niche that you wanted to be in? Like, how do you, how do you come to this? I, I came to peanut butter in a, in a pretty convoluted way. I didn't have like that spark of ingenuity in my kitchen and, um, you know, whip up a product and bring it to market. Um, I actually, as actually probably some of um, your viewers or listeners will know, I brought, I bought Fatso. It was a small company. Um, it was on a couple shelves here in Victoria. I was obsessed with the product. Um, I was very into fitness, CrossFit in particular. So peanut butter is a real cornerstone of a lot of, uh, you know, fitness junkies, uh, a cornerstone of their diet. And, um, you know, I found like my options were very limited, right? So we just had um, really junky, uh, highly processed peanut butters or very expensive specialty nut butters like almond or cashew butters. So uh, this product really fit into a a diet that I, I really wanted to include. And uh, so I, the company uh, closed and I saw an opportunity and said, you know, I'd like to take this off your hands, um, do a rebrand, optimize the recipe and really dug into like exploring the marketing around that. So, uh, so I did that back in 2016 and uh, I didn't know anything about like an addressable market. I did know one thing was that most people love peanut butter. And I've since learned that 90% of households across North America have peanut butter in their pantry right now. And 60% are what they call heavy users. So I was right in that assumption. 
I think assuming that everybody loves peanut butter is a pretty good gut instinct. It's a pantry staple and has a super classic flavor and it's nutritionally dense. So improving upon that seemed like a really good place to start with disrupting the nut butter shelf, um, adding in really nutritious plant-based fats, making it taste amazing and leaving out uh, sugars and palm oils or other harmful products uh, that we find often in other peanut butters that taste really, really good. So didn't know there was a market for it, but uh, my instincts were, were pretty good. So. Well, and it does taste amazing. That's for sure. Thank you. Uh, Daniel, tell me about venturing into the world of ice cream. How'd that come to be and why ice cream? Yeah, so I I worked for the DC government for about 10 years. And after my first child was born, my wife and I took a trip to Europe. And um, I, I wanted a different challenge. The government life is great, but I wanted something different. So while sitting in Italy, eating some gelato in conversation came up, I want to do something different. And my wife said, well, why not ice cream? And I'm like, well, I like to cook. Everybody likes ice cream. That's not a bad, bad thing to try. So I, uh, I was working part-time at the time, did this kind of on the side when my, my son was in his first year of life. And then it kind of became from a hobby to, to something more serious. So now it's a full-time game. Yeah. So that's how it all started on a trip to Italy. So you, you said you like to cook, but as, as for like a food guy, you were never involved in food production in the past. I used to work at like thrifties in the bakery there, but like oh. I don't have any formal training. Um, just a love for cooking and baking. Yeah. Uh, and Jill, you yeah. said you bought, you bought fatso cause it was already existing. Did, did you have any mm -hmm. pre-existing relationship with peanut <laughs> butter except for loving it? No, not at all. Not at all. Um, you know, I, I tried to tie I, right before I bought that. So um, about a year and a half before I just finished a master's degree and had done my research in Northern Uganda. And unbeknownst to me, that is where some of the best peanut butter in the world is. They have these wonderful, tiny little sweet peanuts. They call them ground nuts over there. Um, and I actually learned how to make peanut butter from scratch. And I'm like, not talking like buying peanuts and blending them. I'm talking like from harvesting through to some really innovative uh, techniques, very manual techniques um, from roasting and shelling and grinding um, uh, peanut butter uh, up in a very, very remote town uh, close to the border of Sudan and Congo. So um, I didn't have any ties, but it's so funny because when I first met Dan uh, and he told me that he was gonna quit his government job to go make ice cream, I had just come off a year and a half of unemployment trying to get into government desperately. And there was a hiring freeze and I could not get my foot in the door and I was going crazy because I, all I wanted was like, you know, like a temporary, like auxiliary position and I was going to work my way up. And, you know, it was this sort of period of unemployment uh, where I found uh, FATSO. So I had just started FATSO too when I met Dan and he told me he left this cushy government job and I was like, why would you do that? This is so yeah. risky. Um, so, but yeah, I think it's, it's worked out okay for both of us. And both Absolutely. of you, both of you have a product with a really interesting name. I want to talk about that next. Chamber Chats today, we're speaking with a couple of uber local food producers. Uh, Jill Van Gin is the founder and CEO of Fatso Peanut Butter, and Daniel Edler is the CEO and founder of 49 Below Ice Cream. So 49 Below, Daniel, does that refer to a temperature thing or is it a geographic thing or what is that? It's a geographic thing. So one of my, one of my jobs in the government was working with geographic data, and I worked a lot with Google Maps, and it's always our look lat long is 49 dot whatever. Hmm. And we're below the 49th parallel. So it was always like Victoria is located below the 49th parallel. And that was always like a kind of, that says Victoria to me from a totally nerd geographic sense. So I wanted, I wanted that to be the name of my ice cream company because it, this is where we're located. This is where it's all made. Yeah, the 49th Parallel runs across Vancouver Island. In fact, uh, there's a grocery store in Ladysmith called 49th mm -hmm. Parallel because that's where it is. And it also runs okay. through the middle, I think, of Pacific Rim Park. Is that right? In Tofino? I believe the so parallel runs right. through there. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jill, you bought a company that was already called Fatso. And that's a very disarming mm -hmm. name, to say the least. Um, <laughs> it makes everybody try. Oh, Fatso. Well, that's for yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where did that name come from? Do you know? Uh, I don't. And I wish I could take credit for it. But it was the uh, the person that started the company altogether um, who came up with that name. But that was what drew me to the company. 
because it said what it was doing, right? Because we put these really good plant-based fats in. It's a bit tongue in cheek. It's super grabby on the shelf. And you know, most people, I would say 98% of people completely get the name. We get the odd email, um, but it opens up a good conversation around why we've named it that way. But uh, it's worked extremely well for the brand. And uh, I've always said when pitching the product to a buyer uh, that you know people might love it or hate it, but they will always stop in their tracks to investigate what the product is. And that's a huge advantage um, when you're trying to compete in really competitive categories like not hers. Yeah. When you talk about ingredients too, Daniel, we, we're we kind of in harvest time right now for a lot of berries and things around here. But sourcing things locally for you, uh, you have the advantage that we we do grow things here. We manufacture honey here, all of those things too. Um, has that been an issue through the pandemic, like supply chain's an issue for a lot of people? Has that affected you? It's just sometimes the quantities that we're able to get our hands on is reduced, but like we've been very fortunate with with what we what we use. Um, right now, it's strawberry time. We're trying to get our hands on as many strawberries as we can before they go away. But um, for the most part, knock on wood, we've been we've been very lucky. Uh, and you always come up with a new one every month. You said so. St- strawberry is the current one. Is that right? Strawberry was the one for July. Um, we are heads down working on this move right now, so we haven't really thought about what next month is, but. Um, we've got a couple of weeks before we need to figure that one out. And you, did, did I, you... I get, I'll make, I'll make a quick suggestion, Dan. And Daniel's an extra day. How about a licorice, licorice one? <laughs> oh, licorice, yes. I've been trying to make them, <laughs> make them do a licorice one for a while. Yeah, we'll do a licorice so. one. I've promised this for Jill for yeah. many years. And just never got <laughs> so is that the sweet red licorice or the salty black licorice? Yeah, salty. black stuff, yeah. The salty stuff, yeah. Salt and ice yeah. cream, that, there's something they, they go together really well. Mm-hmm. Tell me about your favorite feedback from your from your customers, Daniel. What have what have people said about your product and your ice cream that that really made you smile that you thought was great? Well, what I love is that our subscribers never know what they're getting, and a lot of our subscribers are, you know, they've got families and young kids, and they make kind of a game out of it where they they take the pints, take the lids off, don't look at the label, everybody gets a spoonful and tries it out, and then like I love getting the emails sometimes even like. 20 minutes after we drop it off saying half the pint's already gone. <laughs> that makes me, that just is great for me. So just the, the attachment people have gotten to our product and, and the monthly reoccurring delivery is really great to see. Yeah. There's a, a commercial for a, a peanut butter brand. We're not going to mention right now, but there's a guy that has a very over the top reaction when he tastes it. Jill, what kind of reactions do you hear from, from people about when they, you know, they stick their finger in and they taste it for the first time? Yeah, people are really passionate about fat, so it's um, it's it's really remarkable to see how dedicated our fan base is to certain flavors. Crunchy salted caramel tends to win out. Uh, maple is kind of the new um, hot flavor, so we're um, I'm anticipating a lot of emails on that one as well. <laughs> but I think the the best feedback we've ever got, frankly, is um, some of the the usages around. Um, medical and uh, health benefits. Uh, so, and not to bring this conversation down, but like, you know, it, we get emails from uh, parents that have kids who are struggling with cancer or uh, people who are, have autoimmune diseases, they're swallowing issues, um, something that's really high fat nutrient dense. Uh, we've had a lot of great feedback for people who are suffering from a lot of different health issues um, and us being able to step in and provide something that's really tasty and super nutrient dense and providing, you know, the right type of protein and the right type of calories and the right type of fat um, for uh, people who are, you know, going through chemotherapy. Um, We have donated often to the um, Center for Cystic Fibrosis up at Jubilee, uh, because often that comes with swallowing problems. So um, it's really interesting to hear the feedback of people who use it for these more like medicinal purposes um, to keep people's strength up. Um, and to make sure that they're getting really good nutrition. So I think overall, I mean, you can't ask for better feedback than that as being a part of somebody's really critical journey um, to health or wellness. That's cool. Good for you for doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, a bowl of ice cream makes anybody feel better at any given time. Daniel, wouldn't you think? I, I think so. I do that every day. So, Well, it's quality control. You have to keep an eye on the product. You got to do it. That's, okay. that's what you have to do. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of specific things about these businesses we want to talk about next, including the 49 Below Philanthropints program. We will do that mm-hmm. next. 
So yeah. we're talking today on Chamber Chats with a couple of people that make these really cool, uber local, amazing food products. Jill Van Jin is Fatso Peanut Butter and Daniel Edler is 49 Below. So Jill, you spoke about the, the community support and the things you do with people who are having health impacts where the peanut butter actually helps them. Daniel, tell me about your program called Philanthropints. What's that? Yeah, so like we've been blown away with the support we've received from the community and we always want to do something to give back. Uh, Philanthropints is something that we came up with where we partner with a business. We've actually done this with Jill where we go to Jill and say, listen, Jill, we would love to make a flavor that you kind of provide us some, some, some inspiration on, and then we will donate to a charity of your choice. Uh, we've done that with, with Fatso, we've done that with Discovery Coffee, Dumpling Drop. And that's one of the things we're really excited about doing in our store. Um, it's been a little bit tricky organizing these, these philanthropies with deliveries and pickups and that kind of stuff. But now that we have a storefront coming up, there's, We'll try to have a flavor probably most of the time that we'll be donating all the proceeds to, to a charity. See, but that's the really uber local thing about you guys, that you, you stepped up and you support the community where you live and the community that supports you. So, so congratulations for doing that. When you talk about doing delivery stuff too, Daniel, I'll ask this both, both of you this question. In our current situation, staffing is an issue for just about everybody, finding staff to do everything from top to bottom in any organization. Joel, how has the staffing thing been for you at Fatso? <laughs> um, I w- I've been very fortunate um, up until recently uh, to have really a very strong sort of second in my business uh, who came on three and a half years ago. Um, I sold his father-in-law a vehicle as I was upgrading to a vehicle that could hold more Fatso. And uh, I gave him a jar of Fatso and he said, oh, you're the Fatso lady. I've been trying <laughs> to figure out who's selling this. And it turns out he has 20 years in consumer packaged goods as uh, the national director of a brokerage firm over in Vancouver. And uh, he eventually came to work with me for the past three and a half years and only recently left um, for a uh, a different job, um, an opportunity that really moves him forward in his career. So we were super sad to see him go. But, you know, we haven't had a lot of turnover. We've always one of the I think one of the things that saved us during this time a little bit is we outsource a lot of our work. So we have like an operations manager, we had a chief growth officer and then myself, but you know, design of graphics, web, accounting, marketing, um, transport, logistics, all that stuff we've, we've outsourced. So, you know, when you have the ability to subcontract, uh, you know, you can stay nimble and pivot really quickly if you need to. So, but right now we do have um, an open position that uh, we're currently trying to fill. And yeah, it's, it's super competitive out there right now, but, uh, you know, Fats is a great company and we offer a ton of great perks and we pay really well. So, and that's the bottom line that people are looking for, right? They, they need a good paycheck. Um, and if we can offer something above and beyond that in terms of, you know, being passionate about the job and, uh, making sure they have really good, um, we have really good employment practices, then, then that's going to be the bonus. Cool. Uh, Daniel, the combinations you've created over the years with various products combining with, with your ice cream. Um, have there been a couple that have just really stood out? You, you referred earlier to sort of a mainstay, but what are some of the more unique or more engaging flavor combinations that you've done? So a funny one we did, this was kind of an April fool's joke, but it actually tasted very good. Um, I had a a container of fruit cellars, green sauce. And you Mm -hmm. know, the nice thing with ice cream is it's, it's a plain thing, but then you can add whatever you want to it and make it delicious and. You can go sweet, you can go savory, you can go any way you want. So we did um, root cellar green sauce ice cream, and it was amazing. Wow. With cilantro, a little bit of spice, but it's just something that you wouldn't see on a grocery shelf anywhere. So it's it's that was probably one of the coolest flavors we've done recently. Like, can you imagine a large a large ice cream company even considering? No, they would never do that. No, no, like the the Hawkins cheesy flavor, like stuff yeah. like that. We, <laughs> um, Unlike Joe, we, we do 99.9% of things in-house. I wish we could outsource more, but um, that allows us to try things very quickly. Um, we can do a small batch of whatever. We did um, one of my favorite things is dumpling drops, chili oil. Mm. And after we did the green sauce, we're like, why not try that? So we made a batch of that. So you can go, the options are limitless. So. And then there's all those combinations with peanut butter that we've all sort of enjoyed throughout our lives. Uh, Jill, I'm kind of a, I'm a peanut butter and jam guy. I'm a peanut butter and bacon guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, 
peanut butter and honey. Big fan of that too. But I have to ask you about one that some people claim is amazing that I just can't get my head around. Uh, <laughs> peanut butter and onion. Oh, that's not where I thought you were going. Oh, where did you think I was going? Where, where did you think I was going? <laughs> we usually do our fatso fortified coffee where we blend fatso into coffee. So that's a really, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. I actually have it for breakfast pretty much every morning when I get to work. I work out of um, Quench, uh, the co-working space downtown. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I come in and blend up my coffee and disturb everybody's morning with my loud blender. But if people want to try that, it is so good. I suggest not using the crunchy because it can leave a bit of sediment in the bottom. Ah. But the classic maple works beautifully. Blend it up in a blender. You can't stir it in. I like to add a bit of cream because I like to have a bit of richness in the morning. Um, but you can add like extra MCT oil, like collagen powder. You can really dress it up or keep it plain. So that's a good one. I don't know about, I mean, peanut butter and onion. Like a, a peanut butter and onion sandwich. Yeah, the, I mean, yeah. I'm trying to remember where I heard about, I think it was either Elvis or... No, one of, that's one of, peanut butter, bacon, and banana. Ba oh, that, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. Uh, but right. And I think one of the kings of England actually used to eat peanut butter and, and onion sandwiches. Listen, raw people onion. everything. So. Raw onion, yeah. yeah. Maybe he spent <laughs> a lot of time alone. I don't know. Maybe that's what yeah. it was. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard that one, but I, I'm open to trying anything. So, yeah. But you know, um, the, co the coffee thing you're talking about, you could probably yeah. add, you could add 49 below ice cream to that too. We've done a fatso, yeah. fatso gato. If, fatso, yeah, fatso gato, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what's, what's next for both of you just to wrap this up because you're both such a great story and the successes you've had so far and the recognition you receive, uh, Daniel, what's next for 49 below? What are the aspirations for the company? So the storefront is the next big endeavor. We're getting very close. Um, but yeah, hopefully in a couple of weeks we'll be opening our doors and excited to get people through the door. And that's, yeah, that's the, that's kind of the North story right now. That's where we're going towards. So cool. And where's Fatso headed down the road, Jill? Fatso is going to be fundraising. Um, the climate is not great to bring on um, institutional investors. So we're actually going to turn to our fan base for this. Uh, we are going to be using Front Funder to crowdsource equity funding. So if you're out there uh, in Victoria and you're listening to this and you ever thought, I would love to own a piece of Fatso, you literally can do that now. So we're going to be launching in a couple of weeks. So just stay tuned to our Instagram and our you know, website, uh, Facebook page. But we would love to have some of our diehard fans come on board as co-owners. You're both doing amazing things in the community and in the business world, too. And thank you for your inspiration. And thank you for doing all that you do. Jill Van Jean is the CEO and founder of Fatso Peanut Butter. And Daniel Edler is the CEO and founder of 49 Below Ice Cream. And that's Chamber Chats for now. I'm Bruce Williams. We'll see you for the next one. Thank you.